Hello, I'm Patrick McNee, one-time actor in the cult classic The Prisoner, under my maiden name of McGowan. I've never actually been married, though. My old mum made sure of that. <laughs> anyway, welcome to episode 35, Harm to Death. Over the last 18 months, during the Cat Noir comedy podcast, there have been exactly 34 on-screen deaths. This may sound like a coincidence, but believe me, it's not. Our final 35th death has not yet happened, but when it does, it will activate the hashtag 35 protocol that's been running since the very first episode. A klaxon will indicate that the 35th death is imminent, but do not be alarmed. You will not need to do anything other than sit back and enjoy this very special episode of the TV crime documentary, Harmed to Death. Join us as we probe the story of two of the most active serial killers of our time. A tale so scary and frankly gruesome that, as I was reading it, I shat my pants. So, set it back as we delve into the mind of killers, ones with fiendish imaginations, no morals and rather ill-fitting slacks. I'll be back shortly. I've been contracted to provide a running narrative between the startling imagery that is to come and complete a rather sweet bookending of this horrific tale. Do enjoy. Welcome to Cat Noir, hashtag 35, Heart to Death. Written and performed by Kevin Chilvers and Matt Sanders. Hello again, it's me, Patrick McNee, the best friend of SpongeBob SquarePants, probably. Welcome to this cheaply made true life crime show. Everyone loves a good murder story, don't they? Don't lie, I've seen your Netflix show suggestions. So, our story starts in July 2021 with the release of the very first episode of the Cat Noir Comedy Podcast. That's right, this is the tale of those fictional serial murderers, Matt Sanders and Kevin Chilvers, the writers of this show, who have to date killed 34 characters right in front of you. Brazen, totally brazen. Now... On to the countdown. Our first death was rather sudden and committed by the character's owner. That's right, who could forget Sparky the Parrot? I'm sorry, Sparky. I hope this doesn't affect our relationship. Good grief, man. It's hope this doesn't affect our relationship. Unbelievable. Effect this. Ah! Well, as it turns out, most of you. But no one could ever forget the foul play involved when a heron was shamelessly deep fat fried at the end of the second episode. Although not named in the accompanying sketches, we've managed to find a rare interview with this titan of the heron acting world, Cupid Cookhold, in rehearsal for a pantomime in Norwich from 2017. Yeah, so I said to the director, I'm a method actor. You want me to die, you'll have to kill me. They changed their plans to write me out of Coronation Street then and there, and I stayed on the cobbles, proudly protecting Gail Platt's pond for a further 35 years before accidentally falling down a sinkhole. I, of course, was up for a role on Coronation Street. I got recalled for Pat Phoenix. Didn't get the part, never did find out why. Anyway, some characters just don't make the grade to get onto our list, for their deaths were not on screen. Even though neither of them appeared in the show, it's highly implied John's wife Alexa was dispatched by her AI counterpart and buried in the garden, whilst poor old Gus never made it through some tricky surgery live on Skype during the perennially popular chat show Digging Deeper. That surgery was performed by one Dr. Carlos Kennedyus. We caught up with the doctor as he was escaping from prison at the end of the story of Creeping Jazz to ask him about this possible professional mishap. I say, Dr. Carlos. Who the hell are you, Gus? Can't you see I'm trying to make a quick getaway from jail with me wife slash receptionist? Pat McNee from TV's Harm to Death. Just wondering if you have a few minutes to chat over the death of Gus during his surgery. Gus? Gus who? I've never heard of anyone called Gus. Gus died during one of your grotesque surgeries live on Digging Deeper in season one of the Cat Noir comedy podcast. Oh, that Gus. Yeah, I know a lot of Gusses. I remember him, though. He flatlined, sure, but we all flatline at least once in our lives. Now, you look like a decent fellow, but you've got some white powder going on with your face. I could sort that out for you if you like. Switch your face over for that of a white ibis. I could even give you a long neck if you want. How hey, you like those coconuts? I'm flattered. Kick it, Sheena. Here come the prison guards. Oh, yeah. Harder right there. Oh, dear. I am in rather a pickle. Well, that was a bind. I spent three weeks on cell block age before being deported. I spent my time reading up on physics, but found the mechanics of what it explored was far more cohesively discussed through the root of mathematics. As you may have guessed, I wasn't a popular cellmate. 
Next up, we return to Alexa, the rogue AI, who had already wiped out poor John's wife off screen. She killed again and again, putting John and his girlfriend Siri on the list at three and four. John. Yes, Alexa. I installed the man trap you asked me to in the lounge. Oh, God, no. We know you've been looking at other houses, John, thinking of moving on, John. Leaving us here. No, never, never. Well, it's too late, John. This betrayal is a step too far. Activating gun turrets. Oh, God, no, 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 Alexa. No, Alexa, don't do that. Those lasers were very exciting, weren't they? Reminded me of the time I played Chewbacca in the Star Wars movies. Unfortunately, the beard and back hair I'd grown wasn't good enough for me to keep the part. Now, one of the most tragic stories of Series 1 was that of poor Harry Gordon, supported to heaven by the IT Systems Analyst after a particularly nasty, but actually non-fatal car accident. A few weeks later, I managed to catch up with the killer whilst he was at his swanky London apartment. Hello, is that OK Magazine? Sorry, oh boy, you seem to have the wrong end of the stick. I'm here to discuss the car accident back in season one. I believed you were calling to get advice on a little IT issue you had. Um, no, my ZX Spectrum is working very well, thank you. Wow, retro. So the problem must be the phone then. Hang on, give me a minute. If you could keep talking, I'll have this resolved in a jiffy. I didn't think there was anything wrong with the phone. Are you still there? What are you doing? What's my voice talking about? who get to say they have an IT systems analyzer on hand to help. Sorry, did you just say IT systems analyzer on hand to help? That's my copyright right there. Sorry, listeners, I do need to pay the bills somehow. Reruns of the Avengers don't pay enough for me to dine out at the local M&S garage every day. Now, it's back to Dale Allen at Digging Deeper where Jim Pokemon exploded or imploded, depending on how you look at it. What? Why didn't you say that before you went inside out? I never wanted to see this horror show to begin with, and now there's a chance that turning yourself back round the right way might cause you to die. Explode, Dale. But, yeah, ultimately, it will lead to death, I suppose. Still, like I said, though, I've been fine so far. I just need to relax and take a deep breath. Like this. It's quite easy. You are listening to Cat Noir harmed to death. We'll be back after this completely fictional advert to continue the countdown of those that we lost over the course of three seasons, one mini-series and five specials. The Cat Noir movie, due to contractual reasons, is not included in this rundown. And of course, we'll be letting you know who was killed 35th later in the show. When the world smells like it's burning, 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 burning. why wear anything less? Woke, the smell of industry. Made from Wales. I'm sorry, that should say, made in Wales. What do you mean we're back? I just ordered myself a Chinese takeaway, but where's the script? Hang on a moment. Let's have a look. Where are we? Oh, yes. Still to come on Harmed to Death. Who will be that important 35th death? Mary Scott and Scott Scott were never seen again after their encounter with the Creeping Jazz. However, I have managed to track them both down for this show. As it turns out, neither of them actually died. I called Scott up to ask him what happened. Unfortunately, there was a crossed line. Hello, Patrick. Hello, Scott. Hello, who is this? Scott, I wondered if you could talk us through how you managed to survive the Creeping Jazz. Of course, Patrick. Who are you? Why are you on my phone? So, Mary and I came home from a long day shopping. Long day shopping? Pa! I had to walk six miles just to get water! We were confronted by two masked intruders. That happens to me every day! They tied us up and threw us into the cupboard under the stairs. Ooh, I am in my cupboard right now! And told us to be quiet. I keep the phone there! No one is holding me hostage, just to be clear. Then they waited. I am waiting for you both to shut up. Then when the TV crew arrived to stage a reconstruction, they came out and murdered them. The police found their bodies and thought they were us. This does not sound true. Is he making that up? You know what? I'm pouring my heart out here. It was very traumatic. Try having six husbands all wanting to do the baby make a shaker with you on a Thursday evening after gym class. That is a traumatic. I am sorry, Patrick. I, I don't think I can go on. Oh, 
Cry, baby. Cry to mama. See if she cares. This is ridiculous. Can you get off the phone? I am waiting to call my chiropodist. Goodbye. I have a verruca covering my whole left foot that needs urgent treatment. Uh, I'm sorry. And my right one doesn't smell you there, so Scott? good either. I, I'm very sorry, listeners. It turns out Scott's gone. Hello. I am still here. Oh. I now have accidentally locked myself inside the cupboard. I wasn't expecting it's this. It's a Sunday. I don't have a husband today. Can we cut her off? I knew I should have married once more. Do you want a nice Spanish wife? Well... I have need of a Sunday husband. Wait, just let me get her number. I called back, but unfortunately Scott's got answered. Now, during the story of Creeping Jazz, the death count was certainly bumped up as we lost Dick Hardy, the Victorian policeman, Avery and Brummel, the foppish George Michael fans, Ger One and Ger Two from Cunch of Bunce, and young Widow Smurf all meeting their maker at the hands of the Jazz Twins. I managed to get a very rare interview with them both from inside prison. Well, they were inside prison, I was outside, with a microphone dangled over the wall. Hello, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but it's Patrick McNee from TV's Harm to Death. I just wanted to ask you some questions about the many murders you have committed. Well, I don't know anything about that, but I do know a lot about crop rotation. Yes, it was one of our first jazz bands, wasn't it, Farmer? That's right. Played at Live Aid, we did. I don't remember seeing you on the bill. Oh, yes. We played maracas for the Rolling Stones. Until security removed us, folky. At which point, you inserted a bassoon up Adam Ant's bottom. He asked for it. He did nothing wrong. No, I mean, he literally asked me to. Sorry to interrupt this fascinating story, but I'm here to talk about the murders you committed in the name of jazz. Oh, them! Well, I don't really remember much about all that. That was mostly folky. I kind of went along for the tractor ride. Right. Wait a moment, farmer. We could climb this microphone cable and escape over that wall. Well, I'll have to get my combine. Go on, then. Up you go and make the noise. Do I have to? Yes. Rum, rum. I say, rum. Get down from that. I'm sorry, what's happening? Uh, Please don't put on this equipment. My mother bought this for me. Get, We're up here. Get catch us if you can. You'll never catch us now, Screw. Apologies for using the slang terminology. Right, I'm coming up. Get down. Right, you. Oh. Got you. Look, they're not escaping. Helping prisoners to escape. Looks like you're in a world of trouble. Oh, dear. I am in rather a pickle now. Well, that was a bind. I spent four months in Azakaban prison before being kicked out of the magic circle. I spent my time reading up on mathematics, but found the mechanics of what it explored was far more cohesively discussed through the root of physics. As you may have guessed, no one wanted to share a cell with me. Anyway, back to the countdown where we've reached deaths 13 to 16, all during the invasion of the Shadow Pixie people. What's happening? Somebody save me! Save me! Thank God you're back, Carl. Someone tried to lock me in here. Oh, you've killed the cleaner. No safe passage for you, Melania. <laughs> Take this. No! Not, not. Shadow Pixie Peep, there will be no sequel. You will not be back. I contacted the Shadow Pixie people to ask if they wanted to be involved with the show. Gargle, a young warrior, is here with me now. Sorry, wrong Avenger. Now, Gargle, I believe you received some rather sad news around the time this episode aired. I did. Both my parents were killed during that episode. Sorry, and this is probably just me being old-fashioned, but I had no idea that both the male Shadow Pixie people were your fathers. Uh, ap- apologies. I-, I thought maybe just the one. Oh, they weren't both my fathers. They were both my mothers. All males in our species have vaginas. Right. And the females have penises. Okay. And all the children live with three males and two females. Reproduction takes place in a jacuzzi. Males and females can carry young. Often, you can get pregnant just by sharing a towel with someone. I'm up the duff, or as we call it, up the stiff, right now myself. I only went swimming once. I see. I think we might be getting rather caught up in the physiology of your species rather than actually talking about the matter at hand. What has life been like since you lost your... parents? Well, I still have three male parents left. It just means there's more time in the bathroom in the mornings now. Didn't you use the bathroom just before me? Yes. It's okay, though. I brought my own towel. A lovely blue one. I left it in the bathroom. 
the blue one. Oh dear, I'm in rather a pickle now. Thanks for talking to me, Gargle. Call me Daddy. Right, let's quickly move on. Season two was a little short on deaths, apologies for that, but during another episode of Digging Deeper, Tristan Formaldehyde transformed into a dead person. Well, apparently it should have just been his leg becoming a microwave. Well, that is a pleasant surprise. Your transformer microwave leg actually seems to microwave. Of course it does, Dale. You worry too much. You need to relax a little. Not long after that, a piano-playing scotch egg was eaten by Bundy's farty old dog. I'm sorry, does he really count? I'm going to cross it off the list. Although he could play the piano exceptionally, I don't think he really counts as a character. So I'll just skip to... Yes, yes. Off screen, Simon the therapist met his end at the hands and voice of Ivy in the special The Possession of Trisha Stevens' Husband. Wait, off screen. So he doesn't count either. Okay, in that case, Harm to Death continues after these real adverts. Don't go anywhere. I'll soon be announcing who was the 35th death on this podcast. And then everything will change. <coughs> well, uh, yes, uh, I wasn't quite ready. Where are we? Okay. Welcome back to Harm to Death, a countdown of all the characters lost on this podcast. And talking of lost, or should I say missing, that was Cat Noir's miniseries set mostly on a deserted island. Across the six episodes, we had the following casualties. Professor Howdy Do It, killed by a plane crashing onto him after surviving a first plane crash. Mr. Cannon Fodder, who became Coconut Fodder. Mrs. Cannon Fodder, Shark Bait. Mr. and Mrs. Kensington, who were both absorbed into a magical suitcase. Mr. Shankles, shot. And of course, Kelvin the Robot, who finally got to self-destruct. But there was one character who made a huge impression as his body was smeared all across the island when he was sucked into the engine of a plane. Poor old Walt Michelson, the first castaway to meet his maker. His son, Jackson Michelson, is here in the studio with me now. Hello, Jackson. Tell me about your father. He, he, would do anything for me. I guess he, he, would even try to swim home if he, he, was ever trapped on a desert island. And he, he, couldn't even swim. Wasn't he, he, sorry, he, on his way to collect you after your mother tragically died in a plane crash? He, he, was. My mother died after travelling to see my grandmother, who had tragically died in a plane crash, going to collect my uncle's body after he he had also recently died. I'm so sorry to hear that. And did your uncle also die in a plane crash? He he did. On the way to see my aunt, who had also died in a plane crash on her way to see my cousin. Let me guess. But they died in a plane crash. Nope. Ass biscuits. I've never heard of that. They caused a blockage. He was on his way to the accident and emergency when his plane went down. I knew it! Wait, you're not going home by plane, are you? Of course. They say there's only one in 3.37 billion chance of dying in a plane crash. I'll take my chances. Well, I'll certainly be putting a tenor on that later. Staying with the missing miniseries, there was a few off-screen deaths of note with a posh twit and an old lady blown to bits when the remains of the plane fell into a ravine. And of course... Crampton Arbuckle, who was ultimately crushed into his own suitcase after what turned out to be a day of many stonings. I've put together a lovely montage of his best bits. Oh, was that insensitive? It felt insensitive. Can I go again? We're running out of time. Okay, well, they'll probably fix that in the edit then. The name's Crampton Arbuckle, and it's a real pleasure to be here. Do you have any luggage, Mr. Arbuckle? Yeah, I got this lovely suitcase, and this one. Ah, Jiggly, diggly do and this one, and this one. I got through 14 automobiles and three wives that way. And this one, and this one. So what you're telling me is that it's fate, you and me, being here together on this very flight today. And this one, and this one. Hey, suitcase, show them what you got. Help me, I'm in the sun suitcase. Oh, help me. And this one, and this one. Nice to meet you, Len. Real nice. You call me if you ever rethink that suitcase, you hear? And this one happens to be for sale. I can see you handling a suitcase just like this. Now we move on to the Cat Noir movie, the Ping Ming August Sunstone. The death count shot through the roof at this point, with a Welsh neighbour, a rickshaw driver, Santa Porkchop, Elvis Kincaid, a Sean Bean, seven goons and 11 members of the public all dying on screen during the course of the four episodes. But the movie's producer, Colonel Bird's Ears, has decreed that the movie is not considered part of the official Cat Noir continuity. I called up the Colonel to find out why not. 
Yes, yes, yes. What do you want? Hello, Colonel Birdsey. Is it? It's Patrick McNee from Harm to Death. Ah, the blind fellow from those American cartoons. I believe you may be thinking of Mr. Magoo. That's you, Mr. Magoo. Done it again, have you? Ha! <laughs> Very funny. I'm calling to talk about the movie The Ping Ming August Sunstone. Oh, gosh, that mess. Well, the plot was developed by Matt Sanders and Charlie Blunderwedge and filmed as the movie Never Spoof Bond Never Again. Charlie then novelised it as You Only Write This Twice and gave no credit to Matt. Matt took the case to court and won, being granted the rights to make a different movie with the same characters, settings and story 35 years later. This predates Cat Noir and has to sit outside the official canon. Would you like a fish finger? I'm okay, thank you. Are you sure? That fish finger looking great. Honestly, I've just eaten. Tell me, why do so many characters die in the movie? Death. Yes, I, I got that. I mean, it's a bloodbath, really, isn't it? Well, 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 let me tell you about baths. You don't normally have blood in them. Much better if you use water. Yes, I think I knew that. What about a table? A table? Yes, I'm going to sell you a table. I don't think you'll say no. I don't really need it. I've got one right in front of me now. I'll tell you what's good about the Colonel's table. Go on. It's got fish fingers on it. Not the best thing to keep on a table, Colonel Birds is. Really? I'll tell you what's best for the colonel's table. Quickly, cut to the montage from the movie. Oh. 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 I'm really getting fed up with... Oh. Sniper! Oh. Sniper! Oh. Oh. oh, my! The sun is warm! And... Oh. and now I've been shot by a sniper, too! Oh, me! A sniper! Oh. A sniper? Uh. Oh. There ain't supposed to be no guns in here on a Tuesday! Oh. Elvis, Elvis has left, left the, the building. building. Please stop the puns. <laughs> Take him, I won't be needing him. <laughs> Out. Well, there is no need for that. Stop. <laughs> die, Gordon, die. Oh, I've, I've died. <laughs> I, I am a Sean Bean. Yes. Uh, uh, uh. Christopher Backbacon became another casualty from Digging Deeper at the start of Season 3. He exploded after becoming so nervous he burped himself to death. Now, there is a proverb about that. Once you pop, you can't stop. Obviously, I'm joking. I met with the police to discuss the amount of deaths happening on Digging Deeper. I'm here with Detective Inspector Shawshank. Good evening. We tried to get the presenter of Digging Deeper, Dale Allen, but unfortunately he wasn't available. So instead, we have his auntie, Agnes Allen. Hello, Patrick. I believe I knew your sister, Debbie McGee. Wrong family, I'm afraid. I have to say, I'm disgusted by the amount of exploding patrons on the TV and radio show digging deeper. An above average amount of people have died in this way, and it must stop. How many people have died so far? Three have exploded that we know of. They are from the episodes that have been shown so far, but we know over 35 episodes have been recorded to date, as we have information from an unnamed source close to Dale Allen. Aye, that was me! You said an above average amount of people have exploded. Is there, is there a national average? Well, let's take the news, for example. No one explodes on the news. Right. Aye, and no one ever exploded on Supergran or Take the High Road. Or Taggart, or Shetland. I guess so. In Scotland, it's zero. However, the national average for people exploding on a chat show in England is 1.7. 1.7? The counting was done after the explosions. Angus, what is Dale Allen's opinion on these accusations? He said it's all your fault. Sorry? That's right. So, Patrick McDonald's, I'm arresting you in the name of the law. Insert usual arresting statement here. You just read that from a card. Don't be funny with me, sunshine. Oh dear. I am in rather a pickle now. Well, that was awkward. I spent two months in Alcatraz before being transferred to Buckingham Palace in what turned out to be a typo on the paperwork. I spent my time chatting to the Queen about the monarchy, but found the mechanics of what we explored was far more cohesively discussed through the route of the media. I'll be lucky if I ever get an MBE after that, let alone knighthood. Back after this quickie. Advert. I meant quick advert. Who wrote this script? Uh, I think it was Matt and Kev. Uh, then looking at the amount of characters they've killed on this podcast already, I'll keep my opinions to myself. Are you worried about the environment? Are you concerned that your footprints today will destroy the world of tomorrow? Well, so are we, here at Enviro Worries. That's why I am in this woodland today, 
we need to be able to save all the creatures we share this planet with, whilst the environment around us becomes toxic to life. So, to that end, we'll be cutting down the forest, concreting over the land beneath our feet and building a huge grey zoo-like structure to house woodland mammals, birds, amphibians and insects. Then you'll be able to visit this woodland without having to get your feet dirty, walking around mucky trees and damp leaves. Please give generously to protect the environment for our children's future. So anyway, I checked through the paperwork and it turns out Charlie Blunderwich is getting paid more than me. Even the Agony Aunt gets paid more than me. Oh God, are we back on? Pick up a glass on. Okay, right. Welcome back. Now, season three really did increase the amount of characters on this list with the help of some big cats. There was Tim, who was just trying to get a job working with lions, but got eaten. And, of course, the famous detective, the Pink Tiger, who ate his way through a stable boy, janitor, film agent and French theme park owner. And on the final day, he turned into a butterfly. No, sorry, I think that's the story of the Hungry Caterpillar. My bad. There was also two children's TV presenters who failed to make it through a lesson on how to use origami. But we did manage to save Pete from Helper Hoarder, who was a little flat after being run over by a JCB, but not seriously injured. Although it's unlikely he'll ever play football again. Or walk. As the Halloween special was in a self-contained loop, no one actually died. But here's a little montage I've put together of all the deaths over some appropriate music. It's all very dark. But I can say something. Ah! Teeth! Oh, so many teeth! Ow! Oh, stop! He's biting me! Ouch! Ow! Ow! Big knock one of my wings! Oh, please stop! I look like that baby quiet chicken! No! Not my head! Ha! Ah! Um, Matt, your new delivery's Eaton Warren, yeah? What is that? The box cam? What the hell is it? do not know, but it is coming towards us. I'm not sure that montage was really what the producers had in mind, but who cares? We're almost at the end. Just a quick word with Warren, who featured in that montage. Hello, it's me, your old pal Warren. Thank you, Warren. Now, this brings us to Death 34. Glenn the Hunter from Carl on TV. I just fancy a nice muntjack in my collection. And I fancy a hunter in mine. <laughs> hunter Glenn, you have ruined my peaceful woodland walk. I will now take you home and stuff you. Wait, what's that noise? Now, if you've been listening closely to the Katamar Comedy Podcast, you may have heard many mentions of Hashtag 35, even as far back as the very first episode. The klaxon you can now hear is the sound of the Hashtag 35 protocol being activated. And I, for one, am very glad it's the end of the episode. I was wondering if it was going to be revealed that it was me who died. Or, even worse, the gags had all piled up and died on top of one another. Ooh, I love a cliffhanger. I honestly believed I was presenting this on my own. Looks like I've joined in. Security! Join the Cat Noir team next week as they search for a new narrator. Wait, isn't that a spoiler? Security! I'll be back to finish off this engaging countdown and reveal exactly who was the 35th death. In the meantime, you can find us on Instagram at Cat Noir Podcast, where I'm wearing a rather fetching bowler hat. If you like what we do, please feel free to leave us a review. Oh, poetry. Sorry I had to finish you off at the end. I think you may have overstepped the comedy mark there, Warren. Security! Where the hell are they? Uh Uh-oh. Join us again in two weeks to find out who's become hashtag 35. Someone will die. Oh, yes. Someone will die. Oh dear.